Edina Alves Batista, the female referee who impressed the football world. Kaká, the famous FIFA World Cup winner from Brazil and a former goalkeeper who spent much of his professional career in Germany and England, Pascal Superbühler. That's our lineup for today. A warm welcome to the second show in our Living Football series brought to you directly from the home of FIFA in Zurich, Switzerland. I promise we will show you FIFA as you've never seen before. It's great to have you join us wherever you are in the world as we are one big FIFA football family. Our first guest became FIFA world champion in 2002 with the Brazilian national team, an outstanding player who conquered the hearts of football fans around the globe, not only with his brilliant technique, but also with his radiant smile. He was kept 92 times for the Seleção, representing his nation at three FIFA World Cups, FIFA Club World Cup winner 2007, the same year he was crowned Men's World Player of the Year, the outstanding Kaká. Benvindo Kaká, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for, for this interview. Kaká, where, where are you right now? There's Albert Einstein behind you. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Brazil right now, I'm in Sao Paulo. And this uh, Einstein, it's from a uh, Brazilian artist that is, that is a very good friend of mine. His name is Cobra. He's very good. I love him and the art is really, really nice, right? It's a very nice picture, yes. And you have a radiant smile, as always. Before we speak about... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> before we speak about your most memorable FIFA World Cup moments, it was reported lately that you would join FC Sao Paulo, the club you scored your first goal for in professional football 20 years ago uh, in an official role. Can you tell us something about that? Well, thanks for the question. It's really important to clarify what is my situation right now. So after that I, I retired, I started to study. I love football and I wanted to learn more uh, tools from the sport that I love, from football. So I started to do some uh, programs and I did one in Harvard, I did one here in Brazil and I'm finishing the, my third one in Europe. I hope I can finish the, the end of the, this year and so the moment for me is to prepare myself for my second career that I think it's really important to, to have this time of preparation and I don't want to uh, go over any step so I was there for Crespo uh, first impression in, in Morumbi but just because I I played with him so Sao Paulo invited me to to give him the welcome from Sao Paulo, but I don't have right now an uh, official role with Sao Paulo. So I'm finishing my study and I'm uh, there in Sao Paulo as a lab to improve, to learn, and, but I don't, don't have any official hope. So what's your plan for the future? Becoming a sports director like your fellow countryman Leonardo at PSG, for example? Yes, this is the role I, I discovered that he's studying, that this is the role that I, I, I most likely want to do. So I don't want to be a coach right now. So the thing that I really like is to be a sports director. So this is the, what I'm preparing myself to do. Okay, if you could choose, which club would you prefer? AC Milan or Real Madrid? Oh, very difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I cannot I cannot choose just one because uh, it's a different club, different country, different supporters, different people. Both of clubs was amazing in, in my life, in my career. So I, it's it's really hard to, to decide between them. So I love both clubs. Well, at AC Milan, there's also Paolo Madini, your former teammate. But speaking of Milan, I've checked your date of birth. 
and I realized Slatan Ibrahimovic is one year older than you. I mean, time to put your shoes back on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Slatan is one year uh, older than me. I think he's, he, he was born in 1981 and I was born in 1982. And he's still playing. That's really amazing that he keeps scoring, he keeps uh, leading uh, a big club as a Milan to fighting for the Scudetto. But for me, uh, it's completely different. I, my time on the field was over in three years ago, and I'm pretty sure that I'm, I'm very happy with the place that I'm right now. You won the FIFA World Cup in 2002 and you played at the FIFA World Cups in Germany and in South Africa. And we have some surprise for you. Fala, Kaká, garoto! Rapaz, me tiraram do treino para mandar uma mensagem para você. Mas com o maior prazer eu vou sair do treino para mandar essa mensagem para você. Lembro muito bem quando você chegou no Mila, todo acanhado, todo tímido, né? Que você ficava com os meninos em casa jogando videogame, batendo papo. É, vendo televisão, enfim, que era praticamente a garotada tudo da, da sua idade, né? É com você praticamente como se fosse um filho para mim, né? E ver você com os meus filhos foi uma honra e um prazer enorme. Ter jogado com você, então, que prazer enorme, né? Então, todos nós apostávamos muito em você quando você chegou no Milo. Nós saímos, nós vimos da maneira com que você chegou, a personalidade que você tinha, a capacidade de, de se adaptar em qualquer ambiente. E foi uma passagem maravilhosa, né? Depois de uns três anos, você se tornou aí esse campeão mundial e melhor jogador do mundo. Olha só que honra para nós brasileiros, que honra para mim ter dirigido você um dia na seleção brasileira, estar com você na seleção brasileira e no Mila. E muito honroso de mandar essa mensagem para você e pedir ao senhor que eu possa te abençoar, garoto, que você possa ser esse cara maravilhoso, sensacional que você é. Você mora no coração de todos nós aqui. Valeu, Kaká? Um abraço do Capitão Cafu. ¿Qué puedo decir de Ricardo Kaká? Crack. Muy buena persona. Un chico profesional. Eh, dentro de todo lo que le rodeaba a él, porque llegó al Real Madrid siendo una auténtica estrella, para él no fue fácil, mucha presión. Pero desde que llegó el primer día, eh, estuvo en un ambiente muy bueno. Eh, se dejó querer, se hizo querer y aparte era un brasileño divertido, o sea, bueno, como casi todos, ¿no? Yo siempre me acuerdo que le decía que, que debería ser el brasileño más guapo de todos porque tenía una hermosura tremenda y aparte jugaba bien al fútbol y él se reía y también se metía conmigo, ¿no? Fue un vestuario, fueron años muy... Muy buenos en lo personal, que nos conocimos muchos, porque el club hizo un esfuerzo y, y trajo mucha gente nueva. Quizá más en lo profesional, pues no tuvimos esa suerte, ¿no? Eh, hasta ha pasado un par de años. Pero muy bien, o sea, muy buen chico, muy buena persona, eh, un gran profesional y me alegré mucho de conocer a, a Kaká, sobre todo en lo personal. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. So, which was your most memorable World Cup moment, Kaká? Actually, I have the, the biggest one. I had two. One is the my debut against Costa Rica in 2002. So, my first game, the, my one night I stepped on the, the field and I played 23 minutes. And the second one is when you lift it up. The, the trophy, when you, you hold the World Cup in your hand and you lift it up and you say, I, I did it, this is an uh, unforgettable moment. Of course, I, I, I had a lot of good moments in World Cup after in 2006, then 2010, but when you hold the World Cup and you lift it up and say, okay, I did it, it's, it's, it's incredible, it's amazing. 
In 2007, you were the World Player of the Year and your team back then at AC Milan that included yourself, Ronaldo, Pirlo, Inzaghi and many more incredible players seemed kind of unbeatable, probably like Bayern Munich today. They recently won the FIFA Club World Cup Qatar 2020, another piece of precious silverware for Hansi Flick's team. Let's take a look at some highlights of the first FIFA tournament since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Congratulations, FC Bayern Munich. One of FIFA's main objectives is to develop football around the world on every level in every country for men, women, boys and girls. Our next guest works closely with Arsene Wenger, FIFA's chief of global football development, to improve the game. He made 51 caps for Switzerland, played in the Premier League, the Bundesliga and the Swiss League. Pascal Superbühler. Hello. Hi, Jessica. Sufi, thank you so much for being with us. Like Kaka, you went to see the FIFA Club World Cup Qatar 2020. Why was Bayern Munich the deserved winner? Yeah, good. Uh, because Bayern Munich uh, in their offensive potential, I think uh, Kaka likes to, to hear this when we are talking about the offensive, they are huge, they are fantastic. The transition game from the defence to the offence, it's fantastic and that's why they deserved really to win this tournament. Here we have a clip, you see straight away uh, the triangle. Eh? It was in the semi-final against Alali. Eh? You see here Knabri, eh? who was uh, on the ball. You see Lewandowski around the box. Eh? And you see also Roca here, who played on this game. The one touch, two touch, it's fantastic. This is a machinery, this works together. And then finally you have always five players here in the box. This is impressive, this powerful a game from, uh, from Bayern Munich. Here on this clip, you see straight away, uh, that was in the 88 minute, uh, Sané, who came in in this game, yeah, he uh, uh, played a, a fantastic role uh, because it was 1-0 for Bayern. Here, Chupo Monting, who goes in between from the defender and the midfield, and this is strange. Sané knows already where the ball will come. Lewandowski knows anyway where he has to run. <laughs> and uh, this is unbelievable. You see Sané with his right foot, a nice little chip over the goalkeeper, no chance. And uh, there was the 2 0. And like this, they came in the final. Here you see in the final, uh, Tigres was very high in, 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 in the half from Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich win the ball. And here have an eye on the number 10, Sane, and on the left fullback, Davis. Watch now transition game, a modern transition game with their pace. Alaba, who plays the ball, uh, fantastic in the feet. And now watch this pace, this power. It's five against two. Uh, this is great from the, from the, the, the own half. And here the only thing what is, was missing, it's a goal. But to be a big compliment also to the defense for uh, Tigres in this situation. Speaking about the offense, speaking about Robert Lewandowski, if you could compare him to any other player, who would that be? Uh, it's, I, I think it's hard to say to compare him because he's, he's complete. He's different from the other uh, forwards. He's very unique. He's, he can play a little bit of the, the box and of course, uh, inside the box is uh, a phenomenon. So it's it's hard to compare him to, to other players because he's very unique. We scored again at the FIFA Club World Cup. So what about Bayern's opponent? You mentioned already Tigres. Who stood out for you? 
Yeah, Tigres was a big surprise how they played and uh, we had here a, a clip, a few clips from Tigres and there was clear also the offensive players again. Uh, you have Vizhiniak, the big leader in the team. You have uh, Viv Gonzalez, a player who is in the box all the time. And you have a, a left foot winger, Guinones, who was very, very paceful. And this was uh, fantastic to see how these three uh, uh, played together. Do you have the scene for the analysis, yes, please? Yes, please. You see here straight away, you have this uh, Guinones and you have Shinyak in the middle of the field. Shinyak is a very clever player. Huh? He knows exactly uh, where to run. And this is a fantastic clip. Guinones goes and asks for the ball. And Shinyak is also asking for the ball, but he knows exactly why he makes this space. It was because for to playing the ball over their uh, defense from Palmeiras. And Guinones, you see here, he is a fantastic left foot. Huh? Uh, totally left footed. But always when Guinones have the ball, Shinyak is around him. And you see always in the box, Gonzalez. Powerful, big, strong in the air, strong with the header, also with the chest, you see after in few clips. And here you see the power from, uh, from uh, Shinyak and Gonzalez in the box. A beautiful uh, cross in and a great header and a fantastic save from Everton here from the Brazil's number three right now. You see here again, uh, Gonzalez, Quinones, Shinyak. We, we, we stay focused on these three. Uh, uh, leaders from Tigres. They always get uh, searched also from a longer ball from the defend out. You see here with the chest, Gonzalez, fantastic to Shinyak. And here you see they are playing together, they are training together. This is a, a good play, the almost penalty, but the referee didn't give a penalty here. But this moving from uh, uh, offensive moving from these three leaders were, uh, was very impressive. Kaká, what did you think about the performance of Palmeiras, the Copa Libertadores winner? A bit disappointed of uh, uh, the Palmeiras participation in, in the World Cup because uh, as a Brazilian, I was supporting Palmeiras to arrive at least in the final. Of course, plays against uh, Bayern Munich in the final, it's, it's really hard, but I, I, I expected that Palmeiras could arrive there. And this is a, an alert for our Brazilian football as well, because it seems that we are uh, being so far from the European teams and getting close to the other nations that was far from us. So it's a, a little bit an alert for us and to it's time to, to wake up and, and, and improving. But I know, Zubi, you were satisfied with the performance of the two goalkeepers in the match for third place. They went into the penalty shootout, Mohamed El Shanawi and Beverton. So let's take a look at some irresistible strong saves. mentioned right, Jessica. Huh? Those two players from Alali um, uh, was uh, clear El Genawi, the leader, and from Palmeiras, clear uh, Weverton, the leader. And it's not because I was a former goalkeeper. They were really, really very good. Tobi, it was a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. Please come visit us more often. Always. So what's coming up for you this year? Uh, I hope, I hope uh, this year the Olympic Games will happen in the summer. And then, of course, uh, we are very focused on uh, November when the, the Arab Cup will happen. And this is, will be the last test uh, before, uh, before uh, the big World Cup in 2022. Thank and you I'm very looking much. very much yeah, forward. Yeah, we are all looking forward to yes, it. Thank exactly. you very much. Thanks very much Thanks. to you, Jessica. Pascal Zuberbühler, Thanks, ladies Kaka. and gentlemen, and Kaka. You are, you are almost, also almost done here, but we have <laughs> a wonderful woman waiting for you, a country woman who just performed at the top level at the FIFA Club World Cup, Edina Alves Batista. She can hear you now. You can answer as well in Portuguese if you want so she can understand you better. So, uh, Edina Alves Batista, how do did she handle the FIFA Club World Cup? E a Edna, eu falei isso para ela. A gente viajou junto, a gente voltou junto para o Brasil e eu falei para ela que 
era um orgulho como brasileiro é, ter uma uma árbitra, né, uma juíza participando de um campeonato é, masculino e não por é, ah, vamos colocar uma mulher aqui para apitar, e sim pela capacidade que ela tem, pela preparação que ela teve para estar ali, por todas as condições que ela criou para ela estar naquele lugar, e não só isso, por performar muito bem, né? porque ela foi com certeza um dos destaques positivos desse desse mundial. Então, mais uma vez, Edna, parabéns por tudo aquilo que você conquistou, até onde você já chegou e com certeza tem muito mais coisas por vir aí. Parabéns. Oi, Cacá. É um sonho estar escutando isso de você. Muito obrigado. Você é um ídolo para nós todos. Te admiro muito. Você é um orgulho para o nosso país. E escutar essas palavras de você é emocionante para mim, cara. Muito obrigado, viu? Imagina, parabéns. Obrigado, obrigado. Parabéns para você também, pela sua história obrigado. e por tudo que você fez pelo futebol. Obrigado. Obrigado, Kaká. Thank you so much for being with us today and we hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon, guys. Thank you very much. And before we continue the interview with Edina, let's take a look at some of her highlights at the FIFA Club World Cup, a milestone in FIFA's history. We are delighted that she is joining us from Brazil, a referee in the two top tiers of the Brazilian league. She also took charge of several matches at the FIFA Women's World Cup 2019 in France, including a semi-final. And now she wrote history. If I had a hat on, I'd doff it for you, Adina Alves Batista. Please, can you tell us how this FIFA Club World Cup felt for you? Uma das experiências mais incríveis da minha vida, gratidão, resume o momento. É, proporcionado pela FIFA, tanto para mim, para a e para a Mariana. É, comandar um trio feminino é, numa, num Mundial adulto, para mim, foi um motivo de muito orgulho e responsabilidade. How proud are you that you were breaking ground for women referees in a senior men's competition? É, mulheres podem, mulheres lutam, mulheres conquistam. É, representar essa luta e esses sonhos é, feminino é motivo de muito orgulho para mim. I am also to send greetings from my personal friend Bibiana Steinhaus, also a top referee, who said you are not only extremely talented, but also warm-hearted and a fantastic person. Do you feel solidarity in between female referees? Bibiana é uma pessoa que eu admiro muito, uma grande árbitra, um exemplo para nós todas. E escutar isso dela para mim é um sonho. Eu admiro muito ela e é um espelho para mim. Bibiana was always asked. What's the difference to be a woman in a men's game? And she always answered, I don't know, I've never been a man. What's the silliest question you got? Olha, para mim não tem tanta diferença. Nós temos que estar lá dentro de campo, tomar as melhores decisões e ir bem em todas as partidas. E cada jogo que eu tô lá dentro, eu me dedico o máximo para dar o meu melhor e acertar todas as decisões juntamente com a minha equipe. E a responsabilidade é a mesma, tanto in competitions masculina quanto feminina. You look incredibly fit. What's your daily sports program? Olha, é, eu tive no processo do mundial é, passado e desde aquilo é, eu me dedico exclusivamente para a minha parte física. Nós temos o Jean Batista, o Jade, que que nos acompanha junto com a Karen, o processo que a gente teve do mundial e temos um treinamento direto. A gente tem Cinco tipos de treinamentos e temos que treinar, só temos quatro folgas durante o mês e temos que treinar e colocar no portal, no Refra Assist, tudo que nós fazemos. Então não tem descanso, a gente tem que estar treinando todo dia, só não treinamos o dia do jogo e fazer todas as valências que são pedidas para a gente estar em forma. E eles acompanham da onde eles estão, porque a gente tem um relógio que é o Polar, aonde a gente baixa todas as informações, coloca ali no portal e eles sabem tudo o que fazemos e treinamos. Uau! I mean, that sounds tough. So what's your next goal, the FIFA World Cup 2022? 
Meu próximo objetivo é, se Deus quiser, conseguir ir para a Olimpíadas, que está aí, se Deus quiser, com, espero que esse vírus se normalize e todos nós podemos é, seguir nossa vida normal ou uma, um novo normal e que tenhamos a Olimpíadas. Meu objetivo é trabalhar para, quem sabe, ser convocada para ir a Olimpíadas e o Mundial 2022 é um sonho. É, não depende muito de mim, o que depende de mim é trabalhar dentro do campo de jogo, treinar, me dedicar e estar pronta se for chamada. E será uma honra e um sonho muito grande para mim e para todas as mulheres. Não só eu, qualquer uma que for. But Edina, I just heard you want to add something according to the ceremony after the FIFA Club World Cup final. É, eu queria falar com todos em relação ao que foi falado da cerimonial de entrega da premiação cerimonial. Eu Foi um momento muito feliz para mim, muito alegre, só que eu fiquei muito triste pelas matérias que saiu em alguns lugares, é, contando coisas que não é verdade. Naquele momento, é, o nosso presidente infantino, ele simplesmente parabenizou tanto eu quanto as minhas duas assistentes pelo trabalho que nós estávamos fazendo até aquele momento e pelo jogo que fizemos, que ele falou que foi muito bom e para seguirmos trabalhando dessa maneira. E para mim isso foi tão feliz escutar isso do nosso presidente e depois que eu peguei a minha medalha, que para mim era um sonho estar ali, viver naquele momento, a minha alegria, a minha é, tipo assim felicidade de tudo aquilo estar acontecendo e ser real em minha vida e eu estar ali, é, peguei ela e estava olhando ela deslumbrada e feliz e nem, e nem, infelizmente, ali no momento, eu, eu esqueci de parar para cumprimentar até o Sheik que estava ali do lado. Porque eu estava tão feliz com aquele momento que estava acontecendo em minha vida, que eu saí admirando a minha medalha e fui indo aonde era para nós tirarmos as fotos. E, e eu não queria que as pessoas é, começassem a inventar mentiras em relação a isso. Então, para mim, foi muito triste é, saber que alguns meios de comunicações estavam falando isso em relação à entrega, a cerimonial de premiação, porque não, não é verdade. E o nosso presidente, a única coisa que ele nos falou foi isso, foi para a gente continuar trabalhando da mesma maneira e disse que fomos muito bem no Mundial. Imagina você escutar isso do seu chefe, que você foi muito bem, você trabalhou bem, você e sua equipe, naquele momento, e ainda pegar uma medalha que você tanto sonhou em estar em um evento masculino, para mim era uma alegria muito grande e eu eu estava tão feliz com aquilo que eu saí andando e fui tirar a foto junto com meus companheiros de arbitragem. Então eu queria pedir para as pessoas, obrigado pela preocupação com todas nós mulheres, mas isso não é verdade. E eu queria que o momento que ficasse da nossa participação da mulher numa primeira competição masculina seja de felicidade e de verdades. E a verdade é que o nosso presidente nos parabenizou por aquele momento. E isso foi muito feliz para nós. E obrigado a todos e eu só tenho a agradecer. Thank you so much, Adina. You are a wonderful role model for young women and girls all over the world. You have a great spirit, you're a great referee. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. O prazer foi todo meu. Eu que agradeço. Agradeço todo o carinho que vocês têm comigo. Agradeço o nosso presidente Infantino, que no momento é, da cerimônia da premiação, ele me parabenizou tanto a mim como a minha equipe. Foi um momento muito emocionante para mim quando ele disse que nós fomos fantástica, que nós fomos muito bem e para continuar trabalhando desse jeito, tanto eu quanto as minhas assistentes, a Neuza Bach e a Mariana, e, e naquela emoção tanta que eu tive ali, pegando a minha medalha e escutando isso do nosso presidente naquele momento tão feliz para mim, é, foi um momento único, eu só tenho gratidão, gratidão à FIFA, gratidão a todos os meus professores que me ajudaram a chegar ali, todas as pessoas que acreditaram em mim e no meu trabalho, obrigado. Obrigado. An amazing woman, Edina Alves Batista. Obrigado. Ciao. Football, as the whole world, was hit hard by the corona crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic left its mark everywhere last year, but FIFA was quick to respond by setting up a COVID-19 relief fund of $1.5 billion to help its 211 member associations. In Thailand, for example, this support made it possible to resume the league. Let's take a look. It has been a long time, six months after football has been stopped. But for sure, the life, the football should be going on. We don't want to stand still. 
we prepare a lot. We have to change a little bit our life to relate it to the situation right now, but we are ready. We are ready to restart. FIFA is support the COVID test in, in, in our country. FIFA never left us behind. แล้วก็เราก็รอวันที่แบบเมื่อไหร่เมื่อไหร่ที่ได้กลับมาเตะอะไรเงี้ยแล้วพอได้ทราบข่าวว่าไทยลีกสามารถกลับมาเตะได้แล้วอะไรเงี้ยพวกเราดีใจมากแล้วก็อยากที่จะเล่นฟุตบอลนะครับเพราะว่าหยุดไปนานเราก็เหมือนมันขาดอะไรไปอย่างหนึ่งนะครับฟีฟ่าให้การสนับสนุนนั้นมาคมสามารถนําไปใช้จ่ายเกี่ยวกับเรื่องการแข่งขันที่จะทำให้มีการแข่งขันฟุตบอลเกิดขึ้นได้อย่างเต็มที่ไม่ว่าจะเป็นการนำไปใช้กับการนำระบบ VAR มาสนุกสนุนการจัดการแข่งขันการนำเงินนั้นไปใช้กับการบริหารจัดการในองค์กรนะครับเช่นเป็นเบี้ยเลี้ยงเป็นเงินเดือนหรือค่าตอบแทนแก่พนักงานรู้สึกความรู้สึกส่วนตัวนะครับก็รู้สึกดีครับคิด,คดถึงคิดถึงบรรยากาศคิดถึงสนามฟุตบอลคิดถึงพื้นหญ้าสีเขียวที่ได้ลงไปวิ่งได้ลงไปตัดสินครับและนี่โปรเจกต์นี้เพียงหนึ่งในหลายๆในช่วงต่อไปของรายการของเราเราจะพยายามจะแสดงให้เห็นกับหลายๆโปรเจกต์ที่ฟีฟ่าและฟีฟ่าฟอนเดชันกำลังเพิ่มสนับสนุนและจัดการทั่วโลกทั่วโลกเราสงสัยว่าเราจะพบเจอกับการแสดงของเราในช่วงต่อไปของรายการของเราเราสงสัยว่าเราจะพบเจอกับการแสดงของเราในช่วงต่อไปของรายการของเราเราสงสัยว่าเราจะพบเจอกับการแสดงของเราในช่วงต่อไปของรายการของเราเราสงสัยว่าเราจะพบเจอกับการแสดงของเราในช่วงต่อไปของรายการของเรา We'd like to invite you again in two weeks' time. Till then, all the best.